Who doesn't care about web security? Right. Everyone should what care about What kind of maniac would not care about web security? It's probably true. I can't even imagine that. Who are you and why? Um, my name is Emily Schechter. I'm product manager on the Chrome security team. And because I feel like it. <laughs> that is probably one of the best reasons to give okay. for existing. And, and I'm Chris Palmer. I'm an engineer on the Chrome security team. And I also feel like it. I always think of the, the security team at Google as being kind of like the, the, the cool kids. You're, you're sort of in a, To me, it's like the A team. Yeah, like I saw a secret room where stuff happens that we're not allowed to hear about. You know, black windows. Yeah. Can't look in. But I, I recently found some security bug, bugs in browsers recently. So I feel, I feel like, am I in? What, what yeah. do I get? Do I get a goodie bag? What's the... You get the secret key to the back room with the black windows. <laughs> oh. With these security bugs I've, I've seen, do I need to write a PDF about it? Because it seems to me like security engineers... And do you need a logo because... They nowadays launch with a website and a logo, right? Logo and a name. So, but why, why is it always PDF? Is it because HTML is inherently insecure? So, <laughs> so, so security engineers have to use PDF instead, which is a superior format? Is that? I have, I mean, we do see a lot of the names and, and logos. Um, in our talk, we're going to be talking about the Meltdown and Spectre. So which like have a nice these, spooky ghost. The nice spooky logo. ghosts. Yeah, they, have, the other one. they came out with a whole website with the whole explanation. That was some good branding. Like, that day was exciting. What's your talk title? Um, what is our talk title? I, <laughs> just, just, just for the I record, remember what it is. They're speaking in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I mean, but you don't content. speak out your talk title. New oh, metadata, like the title. Yeah. <laughs> I, believe, I believe our title is Lessons Learned yeah. from Spectre and Meltdown and What You Should Do to Keep Your Site Secure. Can, That's a long title. Can you change it to Palmer and Schrechter on Meltdown and Spectre? Whoa, I can't believe we didn't think of that. Yeah, that's really? actually shocking. That's better. We, should. <laughs> that's we truly should. Better. So some people will be unaware of, of, of what Meltdown Inspector is. What, so can, can you summarize it in a sentence? Is that a, possible? Do you want to take a crack? Sure, sure. Let's go. So the impact of it is that you lose any guarantee of confidentiality when you have two Th that, programs running on the bad. same chip. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. That, I, yeah. I lost sleep over it. <laughs> I literally did. So, and this was like a like a huge revelation, right? So, I, I, I imagine just one day you both went to work, and like what happened? Like an the email Windows landed. The windows turned black. <laughs> or, or what happened? Everyone just someone ran in screaming. Well, how, how did that play out? Well, first we took our key and we entered the secret room with the black windows. <laughs> As no, we no, do no. every day. Yeah. Slide down the pool. Slide down everyone to the, the security like basement. <laughs> is that? <what> it is? <laughs> I think um, we were delivering a good image of the security okay. team. So, so was it, yeah, just one morning an, an email arrived of like everything's broken? Yeah, That's I think, what I got. Yeah, it's essentially what I got too. And um, we, we ended up, you know, having to really put in quite a lot of work um, and collaboration, like not only on the security team, but it was really multiple teams across Chrome and across Google. Um, you know, from everything from the Google Cloud team to Chrome team, V8 team, uh, you know, people working on like dev tools and printing and everything. It sort affects of everything. Like everyone everyone who's a all really had a to processor come together. Is in a yeah. way affected, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Most computers have those these days. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really sad. It was easier back in the day yeah. without these processors. Yeah. That's when the problem was introduced. We also had to collaborate with other companies in order to like even figure out what was going on. Like it took a while for people to really get a grip mentally yeah. on what was happening. Like, yeah, it takes a good couple days before you can even cope with it emotionally. Well, that's, that's <laughs> what I think as well. Like, I, I, the way I'd imagine it is the email's there, and it's like, oh, here, here's this thing, the CPU thing. And I don't know, maybe on the first read, you'd be like, meh. And then just sort of and then you know, like get up going. in and you realize it's everything. And if you pour the coffee, and then just halfway back to the desk, the drop, drop the coffee. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is. <laughs> It's, the, it's a big deal. The good news is that Chrome was working on this project called Site Isolation for um, a really, really long time, like a, around the order of five or seven years. Um, mm -hmm. And it turns out that Site Isolation is... And that does what it says on the tin, right? It isolates the sites? It isolates yeah. the sites, which makes it actually a really good way to mitigate some of the issues that are caused by Spectre. What ends up happening is that a tab can actually include multiple sites, right? Like a site could have an iframe with 
it's loading some ads, stuff like that. So the way site isolation changes things it's is like now circling, each of those sites are now isolated. Circling back to your event loop stuff, yeah. like if they share an event loop, it's hard to put them in different processes, isn't it? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is actually the same thing in, in the same way that we have like iframes in the same event loop as the parent page. It's it's, it's part of this problem. Yeah. So what did what do developers need to to change uh, about how they how they write sites in, in, in response to kind of how, how we're going to be changing this process model? So um, one thing that's kind of a, a part of site isolation is called cross-origin read blocking. And there are some things that developers need to do to sort of take take advantage of cross-origin read blocking. Um, and we'll be talking about this in our talk this afternoon. Oh, so everyone should to. check that out. So yeah, people should definitely check that out. Yep. Yeah. How much does, um, I mean, the, the one security primitive on the web that I'm mostly aware of is CSP. How much does this have to do with mitigations against Spectre and Meltdown? It's just more an orthogonal thing about you know cross-site scripting and things. Does it have anything to do with Meltdown? No, I don't think so. It won't, no. it won't help you against Meltdown. It doesn't make it worse. It's just orthogonal. Well, so but it's still important. So it everyone is, right? should be using a content security policy. Um, we'll also talk about that in, in the talk this afternoon. Well, there you go. Do, do you think that, um, so it feels like a lot of security problems we have on the web is down to uh, Things that like let one site make requests to another with the other site's cookies, without any permission for that. Is that is that just a mistake we made with the web? Is that something like if we started again, we would just not allow? Uh, that's a tough one. I spend some time thinking about that, and uh, I think that kind of composability and embeddability is a key goodness of the web. I mean, we have an every list of what the web superpowers and like the linkability yeah. couples is one of the things we always list. That's definitely on there. I think the thing to do is. Uh, depending on the situation, like with cookies, you know, we're looking at the same site cookies, the new thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, a good way to solve that kind of problem, because then the request is effectively anonymous and it's no different than what anyone could do. And so that, same, I think that deals with it pretty well. So same site cookies is when, like, if I've included an image to my on my sites, it's going to get my site's cookies. But if I include an image to it to another site, like this set of same site cookies. It's, it's not the not same be site, with those. therefore no cookie, right? right? That's the bottom line of it. And it's the same with navigations as well. Is that, is that true? If I'm navigating from one site to another, it doesn't send the same site cookies? Uh, I don't know if that is true. I think if you click a link... That would be weird a little bit, right? Like if I linked from my page to Facebook, you would suddenly not be logged in? Right, because a navigation is a transfer of control yeah. to the new origin where it should be OK. We'll link so. to you know what we'll link to an article that explains what is true because I don't know right now. <laughs> yeah. So so one of the things that like has been, I guess your team's mission for so long is to drive the web off HTTP and onto HTTPS. Are we done yet? Is it 100 percent? We are not at 100 percent yet, um, but we are definitely seeing a lot of movement up and to the right. Um, we started publishing this HTTPS transparency report back in I think early 2016, and what's pretty cool is that we've been constantly updating that with. Um, you know, the amount of HTTP that we're actually seeing being used in Chrome. Do you remember the current number? I think it's somewhere around 70%, but it kind I mean, of varies per for... platform. Yeah. You see it definitely high on, you know, Chrome OS, um, probably more like 75 or 80. I mean, the problem so... we usually have is getting to the long tail, which nobody maintains anymore. So that we are at 70% is actually, seems pretty good. But, but even yeah. 70%, it, it doesn't seem like that long ago. I mean, I've been at Google five years, and it feels like when I started, the, the HTTPS still felt like very much in the minority of sites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I remember um, giving giving talks on HTTPS, and I remember when we first published the transparency report, we have, we have this list of the HTTPS status for the top 100 sites on the web. When we first started talking about it, it was maybe 20 or 25 sites had were, were using HTTPS by default, and now it's more like um, 80. So it's re it really just in the last you know, two, two and a half years, we've seen this massive increase in the top sites. So how have you achieved that? What have you done to actually push that? I bet it's like encrypt. <laughs> oh, uh, one, spoiler alert. <laughs> one thing is that I, I really think it's been a push like around the entire web ecosystem, not just Chrome, to, to really help things. So. Um, you know, That's true. Let's Encrypt started, which is this new free automated certificate authority, which I think made made everything much easier and cheaper for people. Yeah. Um, on the Chrome thing side, one thing we've been doing is changing the UI of HTTP sites to gradually mark them as not secure. And upcoming this July, we're really excited. All the HTTP sites will be marked as not secure. It feels like the right time to do that, to, to start marking things as not secure, because if it we did it... It is not. Well, it, <laughs> yes, OK, but that's always been true. 
But now is yeah. the right time to do that because it, if we did it five years ago, people would be seeing it for all the sites and they become desensitized to it. Is that yeah. why we is that why we changed that? Yeah, I think you know when people see warnings too often, they get what's called warning fatigue, where they stop paying attention to warnings. And we also just thought that it could make the web seem scary if suddenly tons of sites that you're used to seeing, which are in fact secure, now look scary. Um, so you know we feel like we've kind of reached this point where we can gradually turn it on for everything. And they're doing a sound test. Well, <laughs> can they not? <laughs> uh, I, think we just, just keep going. I think it's perfect. I would stick with it. I would keep that part of the video. Yeah, yeah. Back again. Just ask, just ask, hear it.